Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at something that was in the news this week on how Firefox is implemented in Linux Mint now. Did they sell out? But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Now, if you stayed in touch with Linux News this week, you found out that Linux Mint is now implementing Firefox differently in its operating system. So I'm going to switch on over to a different website real quick. And the news come out. Linux Mint 20.3 appears now with more Mozilla flavor. Why this distro switched Firefox defaults back to Google. Now, before we get into this, I'm just going to ask y'all. How many of y'all switched away from Windows or Mac and came to Linux to get away from the Googles, the Microsofts, the Apples? Some of you did. I understand not everybody does. I know people that use Linux and use Google Chrome on Linux. So this may not bother you. So there's two different ways you can look at this. But basically, Linux Mint this week, following the release of 20.3, announced a deal with Mozilla, meaning that vanilla Mozilla versions of Firefox and Thunderbird would be on their operating system. What does that mean? Anybody that's ever used Linux Mint knows that when they use it, it's got a custom icon, and when you open it up, it automatically goes to the Linux Mint homepage. It's really kind of integrated into the operating system. And like most Linux distros, Mint offers Firefox as its default browser and Mozilla's email client, Thunderbird. The Mint team had built these apps itself, basically taking the code and customizing it for their operating system. Now, they were using the Ubuntu version because, of course, it is based on Ubuntu, but... Now they're switching away from that, and they're going to go with Mozilla's versions. And I do believe one of the underlying reasons for this is because Ubuntu switched to packaging Firefox as a snap, and of course, Linux Mint dropped snap support on its 20 release. So that's really not going to be a difference to the user. I mean, there were only small changes made to the application to begin with. One of those was it sent you a notification to restart if the application updated in the background, or it would search for plugins in the distro software repositories, or it would add messages in the help about section of Firefox. On top of that, they also had reset the default search engine from Mozilla's defaults over to Mint's own choices which is Yahoo and DuckDuckGo, and that brings in revenue for the project. And here's where it gets kind of sticky. Mozilla doesn't like it when someone takes its browser, modifies it, and ships it using Firefox trademark and logo without some kind of agreement or understanding in place. Now it seems like that agreement has been made. Linux Mint has signed a pack, framing it as a commercial and technical partnership with Mozilla. As part of this, Mint can continue using the Firefox name, and the distro will revert its Firefox start page and default search engine to Mozilla's choices. That means using Google as a default for Firefox. Google pays Mozilla to be the default web search engine on the browser. What do you think about that? Please let me know in the comments below. Linux Mint founder, everybody knows Clem, indicated on the distro's blog that this partnership may funnel money from Google to Mint via Mozilla. We'll lose revenue from Yahoo and DuckDuckGo, but we'll get revenue from Google, he wrote. So what this is telling me is that Yahoo and DuckDuckGo, yes, they were putting revenue into the stream, but it's with both of those together, it's not going to equal what Google can give you. Now, there's two different ways you can look at this, okay? Linux Mint is a free operating system. They depend on donations and whatever revenue they can generate. Now, this from Clem's perspective is pretty simple. I need to bring money into the project, so if I take this step, it's going to be easier for me to fund this project and keep making this OS better. Now, if you look at it from a user's aspect, if you're one of those maybe 40 50% of people that came to Linux because they want privacy, security, and they wanted to get away from the big tech, this kind of is irritating in a way. But really, at the end of the day, all you got to do is go into settings, click a couple buttons, and you switch the default over. So is it really that big of a deal? Let me know what you think below. Now, Clem went on and said, without this partnership, we would have had to have stopped using the Mozilla brand if we wanted to continue to monetize the traffic with our search partners. I think people were already keen with our customization, and I think losing the name Firefox would have been detrimental to our project long term. Now, that's the question. Would it have been detrimental in the long term? when it's something you can download quickly, or is it more something that's been put into a press release to make people understand why they're making the changes because they know some people are going to disagree with them. 
I'm not really sure. Now, here's the official announcement that Mint put out. In the past, Linux Mint used its own default setting and configured Firefox in a specific way. Most of this configuration is abandoned to go back to the Mozilla defaults. The default start page, linuxmint.com, it no longer goes there. The default search engines no longer include Linux Mint search partners Yahoo and DuckDuckGo, but Mozilla search partners Google, Amazon, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and eBay. So we went from Yahoo and DuckDuckGo over to Google, Amazon, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and eBay. Four out of the five right there are powerhouses. So take it for what it's worth, guys. And the default configuration switches from Mint defaults to Mozilla defaults. And Firefox no longer includes code changes or patches from Linux Mint, Debian, or Ubuntu. With this partnership, we also satisfy Mozilla's requests when it comes to use their intellectual property, their name, brands, and identity. For example, the Firefox icon is changing to follow Mozilla's usage guidelines. Guys, I can really understand all of this, but at the same time, this is kind of straddling the whole free and open source software type situation that I am used to. I'm used to being able to take a piece of software, customizing it, and using it how I see fit. And now we've got people stepping in and saying, if you're not going to use it this way, you can't use it. You can't call it Firefox. You've got to call it something else. So I don't know. I'm kind of torn in between this. Let me know what you think about the whole situation below. And it goes on to say in this article, by the way, if you have disabled telemetry in Firefox, you should check to see if it's still off. This lets me know that with the new Firefox released and the new Linux Mint release that if you've got your settings a certain way, you need to go in and double check them because I do believe that tracking is going to be on by default with Firefox. I think that's the way it is anyway, but if that's what you're using, you definitely want to check that. If you're somebody that's worried about that, if you're somebody that doesn't care and they switch to Linux just to have a better operating system and are still into the Microsoft and Google and ecosystem, totally understand. But that's what I wanted to talk to you all about today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Linux Mint's stance on this correct? We're going to keep Firefox. We're going to switch over to Google as our default so we can include more revenue into the project. Or should they have taken a stronger stand and said, no, we will just come up with our own version of the browser, keep it the way it is so our users are comfortable with it. I can see both sides of it, but I really want to know from you guys what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the content that we create, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.